This is the Cheers Podcast. Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Patrick Everett. On today's episode of the Cheers Podcast, we'll be covering the National Football League. As some of you may know, uh, some of the teams have already released uh, their policies uh, and penalties enforcing proper anthem behavior, whatever that is. Now, I know that the RGV is currently... And before I get into the NFL, I want to first say this statement. Uh, I know the RGV is currently in the national news cycle for the detention centers and the zero tolerance policy of the Trump administration. I don't want to neglect that story for this podcast. I know the local reporters, uh, national reporters, other community groups out there have been fighting this policy and helping and reuniting this uh, family, helping uh, reunite family members, which is crazy that we have to say that as a political thing. Like we have to fight so we could keep families together. That's such a downer. It's just sad that we have to do that it, against a U.S. government. It's stupid. Whatever. Before I get into um, before uh, that episode, uh, I just want to make that statement right now. Just letting you guys know that it is. Uh, uh, I'm aware of it. Everyone's aware of it. I, we're all talking about it. I, I'm going to get to it later. I want some time to pass before I get into it. Uh, there's a lot more to to happen. Um, like, you know, um, I'll get to it in another episode because it's not over. Uh, it's not going to be over yet. I know there's still hundreds uh, of kids still separated. Some of them are not eligible, um, uh, for reunification. So there's seeming more of that. I could get into it next time, but for, for now, please just show your support for those community groups that are fighting this hateful policy for, uh, by donating to them. They are the Comunidades in Acción in Defe, uh, Texas uh, Rio Grande League Aid, Kino Border Initiative, Las Americas Immigrant Advocacy Center, uh, Border Workers United, Texas Civil Rights Project, La Union de Pueblo Entero, Lupe, uh, Puerte Human Rights Movement, South Texas Human Rights Center, Florence Immigrants and Refugees Rights Project, No More Deaths, Humane Borders, Arise Support Center, NETA, the Progressive Media Group, uh, New Mexico Immigrant Law Center, and Raices. Those are the groups that uh, I hope you could show your support by donating to them and giving some type of contribution. Uh, Okay, well, back to the NFL. For this episode, I invited EJ and Joey once again to discuss the, uh, the stupid decisions of the NFL regarding their players protesting against police brutality and inequality in this country. And how the message of police brutality and inequality is lost under the siren cross of unpatriotic, un-American, ostracizing propaganda. Let's begin. I see this stuff in the NFL and I have no idea about it because I don't watch football or anything regularly. So I don't know anything about the sport politics. But now that it's becoming presidential politics with Donald Trump intervening and saying stuff and commentary... It basically created this like upheaval in the NFL world, which I have never seen before or were too young to experience previous like political activity from other athletes. But with Ka- uh, Kaepernick doing the whole kneeling, it kind of like into, uh, interweaved into what I was observing or what I was keeping up with. And so I, I'm here kind of like asking broad questions first with EJ to see what his take is because... I, I just want to get the emotion, like what the fuck is going on in the NFL? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what I. That's definitely. I mean, I'm not going to say that I know everything in the loop, but from what I hear and what I read as I follow my team, as the season is going to get started, there's definitely a lot of things that I go, "What the fuck?" To uh, I'm sure Joey or anybody that has a team would definitely have at least one one WTF moment from so far this off season joey it's been a lot more controversy than i think i'd like to have in my sports you know 
I look to sport as something that I can just kind of uh, get away from the world and just relax with. And now it's just something else that is political. Yeah. It, it's just, it's tough, man. I, I know a lot of people that are boycotting and, and it's just, it's tough because you have, it's not just in the NFL, but I think the NFL kind of paints a picture of how the world is right now. You can see that there's people on two extreme sides, you know, yeah. and you can't, you can't ever just play the middle because if you play the middle, then one side's going to get mad and then the other side's going to get mad. And that's just anything in this world right now is just constant bickering from both sides. And there's no, it just, there's no winning from anybody. It's just, it's tough for me. Yeah. I can see that because for me, I'm always in that bickering arguments with the uh, on one side of things. And I, I always have this phrase just because of the stuff I, I read and everything like uh, you can't be neutral in a, in a moving train. And with that, it kind of guided me and what I, where I should stand. But when it comes to the sports, I think that's a, a form of neutrality, right? Like you're not even supposed to have these like polar extremes, just like bickering with each other. It's like you said, you go there to escape, to enjoy it. It's a form of entertainment. Now it's just becoming this political entertainment and it's very dangerous too, because it's supposed to be lighthearted, right? Well, that's what I think. Well, I agree with that. And also it kind of goes in uh, the opposite direction of what maybe Americans kind of grow up to think once you become rich and famous that you don't really, there's another level of society that you get to live in and you have these rich and famous players that are taking a stance and they're getting, they're getting tackled down because of them. And it's, it's pretty crazy. It's, it's a lot of, it's a lot to unpack. And what worries me the most is the season hasn't even started yet. Yeah. So yeah, I know. Are the players going to stay in the locker room? Yeah. Right? Or are they going to... There's just this whole, like a suspense for a show to come up. Like, what's going to happen now? Yeah. It's, it's like a, a huge other event. Now. Yeah. For me, it's not even like, oh, man, I hope my team wins. Like, oh, man, I hope everybody stands up or goes to the locker room because I don't want guys to be missing games. Yeah. Yeah. It has a big a big impact on the season. Yeah. Now, well, well here, I'll go, go uh, for it. Sorry, go on. No, go no I'm it. just, I'm just, I think back to the years past and I can honestly say that I don't even remember the national anthem even being televised. Maybe for the Super Bowl or for some kind of major event like that, but just a regular Sunday game, I, I don't remember them showing the national anthem and that being such a big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I saw that. I, the uh, reports that like that was all funded by the government to kind of like promote more patriot, patriot, patriotism into the sport. And so and now they officially put it in the rules that you have to stand and now the team gets penalties. I mean, the one time that I got, I got to go to an NFL game, uh, I was still walking up to the seats when the national anthem played. It was such a glossed over moment. Like if you weren't right. in the right spot to hear it, you were going to miss it. And no one was going to say, yeah. oh, you're unpatriotic for missing the national anthem. Get out of my stadium. Mm-hmm. You know, but now it's well, kind of like, ugh. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember it being televised. And now it's like, the ma- like one of the biggest points of every single game, whether it's an important game or not, they're gonna. They say, you know, we'll be right back for the national anthem. Like, oh, I don't know. It's just, it's unfortunate because I hate to sound unpatriotic, but man, this is just. I think it's getting out of hand. Yeah. I, I what think, do y'all think? I think when people keep saying that you're not patriotic, you don't love the the. The flag, you don't love the anthem. You're disrespectful to soldiers. Disrespectful to soldiers. Uh, like you hate America. Uh, you didn't grow up with God in your heart or fear of God in your heart or something like that. And all that stuff is kind of like, okay, wh- what makes me unpatriotic? Like, like, but how though? How? Like, tell me. I know, like, trust me, I sound very unpatriotic sometimes, but technically I am probably a patriot. I would defend your liberty to like yell at me the stupid stuff that I have to stand, I have to kneel or... I have to do something because of a tradition or a ritual. So uh, for me, it kind of just boggles the mind. I mean, I bef- I read an article, I think it was by ESPN, 
that said that Colin Kaepernick met with a special forces soldier, uh, and he talked. He gave him his ideas about why he was going to protest and what he was going to do, and he was straight up going to just going to sit down. And the the soldier was like, mm, "I think that's just too disrespectful." And through talk, like through ex- they're exchanging their ideas, the soldier says, "You know what? I understand what you mean." And I think that kneeling is kneeling has taking a knee has never been a middle finger. You know, it's never been thumbing the system. Yeah, I always thought it was like the most peaceful way to protest. Like, <laughs> exactly, like Martin Luther King has done it, and like you're showing that you are just like this discontent that you're trying to show this dissatisfaction of social order or dissatisfaction of justice or whatever, and you're just telling the masses in a way that's very public that. You disagree. Yeah. And and so some might say, well, he should have tried something else. And I immediately think, well, you're missing the point of a protest. Yeah. It's not like where and when, because if you kind of dictate how to protest and where to protest, then yeah. you are not free. Exactly. So. And then to, right. to Joey's observation that now it, the anthem's televised, well, that means the protester is kind it of worked. getting is kind of working but instead of talking about the message they're talking about a, the smoke screen of not being patriotic or not standing up for the right. anthem and neglecting well, the the social problem that, that they're doing for well what is he what is he uh, uh you know forgive me for sounding stupid but it's something to what what you just said ej what is he actually kneeling for you know like you, it gets kind of the message gets lost in the well, it's unpatriotic, uh, you know, I'm mad at you, the president walked in, the vice president walked out. So you don't really, I don't really understand what his message was in, in the beginning. Was it a patriotic thing? Was it something to do with race? I mean, I don't, I don't really even know. I think uh, the best I understand it is that it's, it's a protest against the, uh, the violence or the perceived violence that... Uh, it's not perceived. It's real. Yeah. Uh, the violent, the the police brutality of uh, unarmed uh, civilians, uh, either black and white. Like yes. It's, uh, this hyper aggressive militarization of the police force that's treating these uh, vulnerable communities as unhuman. Unhuman. And, and, and uh, basically right. shooting them in the back, uh, making up these uh, concoctions in the in the court in the proceedings to kind of uh, shield their uh, fellow man in the blue. To the point that, like, we have this whole rivalry now of Blue Lives Matter. Uh, so it's about police br- uh, brutality as well as racial justice and equity. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, systemic issues that these guys are protesting. So Cap, when he kneeled, he's basically is police brutality and inequality. Police brutality, that's right. And it, it's 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 pretty. Uh, of course, you know if but that's lost. If, like for, for example, sorry, for example, right now Joey like. Like you don't keep up with the whole racial uh, debate that's going on because for you it's like ah, like that's I don't see that or I I, I know I understand that but for a lot of people like they get lost. It's there every day. It's there every day. But like for example, just because you got that side of the story and you couldn't like pinpoint like if, was it police brutality? What did Cap uh, Cap say? You couldn't hear that because so much noise in between. Yeah, all, all this propaganda was just like. I really don't know what the message is. And he, and I have to like, it's like some type of propaganda that like, you don't support the troops, right? It's like, no, I don't support the war. And they kind of like, the only phrase of propaganda that I can understand as the definition is kind of like something that everyone should support. So if you disagree with it, you're the outsider. You need to get ostracized, unpatriotic, un-American, mm-hmm. right? Like disrespecting the troops right, at the flag. And, and I think, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go on. No, go go on. No, I was just gonna say that it's just uh, it's just crazy that his message just gets twisted and turned into something else, and then you don't really you have to sift through all of this noise to get to the basic meaning of the protest. Which I mean, isn't the right to protest one of our uh, basic rights as an American citizen? Yeah. No, it's a fundamental thing. They did this for a message, right? Don't do this again. No one else should do this. Exactly. Right? Like, it's just a dominance move. Mm-hmm. And um, these guys, the owners, majority of them are white. 
and they just don't want to de- uh, be discussing about these issues. They don't like that Trump is making a, uh, what it is, but they're going to defend Trump. Like that's what they're going to do right now because it's um, American football, right? Like their decision defends Trump, even yeah. if they're not saying hey, we defend Trump because it's like, well, I'd rather suppress your first amendment right rather than just let you do it and go on with the game. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's pretty And it's a form. And and I said this before, like in private property, you don't have freedom of speech. Like the employer could tell you not to say certain things, do, do certain things. So actually I didn't think about it like that, Patrick. If you think about it now, now that we started talking about it, it is our right to protest. Right. Yeah. But if I go to work and I, do something like this i'm pretty sure my employer has the right to fire me yeah and is that wrong no no that's what happened to the girl who flicked the president off in the motorcade like she was on the public road on her bike she flipped it off she uh i think she put it on social media or someone and basically blew up and her employer found out and the employer depended on uh, federal contracts and so not to risk any like reduction in contracts they just permit uh, like pre- preventatively fired her but see i i can understand wow. that when your employer says well you can't use your phone because of sensitive information or you can't be tweeting on company time because it's whatever but the nfl has nothing like that and in, in my opinion you go from being prejudiced against people by just by saying you better send up you're unpatriotic you're doing it because you're a son of a bitch or whatever like like they've been described and it becomes race, like a racial, a racist policy, because you have the men in power going after a minority of employees to stop something that only that minority is doing. So they are using well, their whole power to suppress a, a voice, and that to me kind of crosses the line between oh, don't have your cell phone out because we don't want you taking pictures of social security numbers to you can't you can't exercise your free speech in, before the game and that's that you know that, that's well, my opinion is it only minorities that are doing this because i feel like i saw pictures you know just here doing research no, of I, people what, that aren't minorities no, no no what i meant is like only well, a small part of the total workforce oh, my, is, is doing okay. it that the whole protest yeah the whole protest only like a handful of guys are actually still like leading the charge. And unfortunately those two guys are unemployed at the moment. And they're the guys that are in the collusion case against the NFL. And so that's that, that's that for right now. But I'm saying like, it's not like you don't have every player saying this, you have a small number of players doing it and the rest of the players showing their support for their teammates. But you have this whole rule and controversy that was created around a small group of those employees. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting how much, how much political, uh, coverage this is getting. It's, it's not just about the sport anymore. It's about and social and economic and, and, you know, just all these race and all these different things that are more political than sports. Yeah. I, for me, I was trying to like figure out, what this really is. And I remember texting you guys, like it's going to be about NFL and the culture wars. And when it comes to culture wars, it goes into political science, sociology, psychology, it goes into a lot of things. And so, yeah, like basically by the president, just commenting on NFL activities like that, not just like uh, figuring out who's going to win because Obama would uh, comment on the uh, NBA and uh, the sweet 16 and stuff like that so he'll comment on that but it was very neutral it was not political and maybe he'll make a joke that's kind of like related to politics into the sport but it was very well accepted in a non-controversial way and trump makes it into a whole cultural thing because now you're going to this like polar opposites that have been fighting for a long time and now you're kind of like removing the middle Mm-hmm. You get remove the middle, and now like you're either over there or over here, right? And here, here's the fight, and I want this fight, especially during the midterms, especially right now when we're leading up, because I want my base to be enthusiastic, like super excited. 
they want to stop the unpatriotic kneelers. They want to stop their uh, status from declining from what the government was perceived as taking care of these other groups. So I don't know. It's the cultural pimple that's coming out from America right now. Like, oh, but what, what trips me out is how his followers are not fatigued by the constant like Trump gas gaslights them. Like he says, "Oh, look at that! Hey, look at that thing you hate!" And boom. Yeah. Right? But they don't get tired of it. Like no, I, I, I get, get exhausted. I get, I get tired of ragging on the Eagles. Like I, I do. <laughs> it's like okay, ha, ha, like <laughs> let's wait for it. You know, I can't ride that that horse all the time, but it's like, guys, hate you hate all the time. Like, yeah. Oh, F F Y I for the listeners. Uh, EJ is a Dallas Cowboy fan, and Joey is an Eagles fan. So just a little backstory. Definitely. And and Patrick pretends the, uh, to be an Eagles fan. <laughs> the uh, last Super Bowl, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if you remember this or not, EJ, but I think the Philadelphia Eagles won that Super Bowl. Am I am I right in saying that? Yeah. <laughs> all right so see you guys on different sides but like this thing is causing even more yeah. like separation of the yeah middle. i mean i love that the eagles players were the guys leading the oh we're not gonna go to the white house because we're not gonna go do it and that, that little nugget of that little 15 second story that pan, like died within days mm -hmm. you know but it, it it didn't matter i was gonna be like nah stupid Eagles player, you can't speak for me, you know, like, hey, why not? Like, that's, you're, y you are the closest, you're closer to it than I am, right? So go for it. Like, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty lame. It's pretty lame that, that that's up. Because I remember when I think Trump had, the, it was in the November, no, I don't know when it was, but Patrick what? and I, we were talking about how Trump was going to bring up shit storm to the nation and all this stuff and i said well at least we have football oh yeah and at least football will oh, take man. us away yeah from the politics and yeah. we'll talk about whatever and i think shortly thereafter that tony romo had his career ending injury yeah. and then like that's that season is when the kneel started happening and it's just been well, it happened a year ago it's just it started climaxing right around trump I think last year, yeah. It's 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 been downhill since then. It's been getting progressively worse. Yeah, it will. It definitely will be if he continuously like does uh, verbal jabs in our cultural veins, like basically yeah. showing where our, our soft spots are and basically and basically pressing onto it. Like we have, we we're born on blood and violence. I this country has a lot of cap, uh, catching up to do when it comes to racial. Uh, economic parity for like accumulation of wealth and capital for the min the blacks and browns of the c country because they don't have that history and so everyone forgets it and, and thinks that why everyone keeps bringing up slavery why this always has to be about race well it's because we haven't found equity yet mm -hmm. like once we find equity like this bullshit shouldn't be that often i'm not finding a perfect world i'm just saying it would be reduced to a point that come on like th it'd be uh, figured out yeah, I think we totally Easier. suffer. From, I think we totally suffer from that because it's like, well, didn't they let Jackie Robinson play baseball? Like, why? Are, why can't yeah. white guys have, you know, their kneelings in the football? But it's like, a because that race thing just never went away. It's still, still there. there. We well, all you know, I feel that. like it's. I feel like it's starting to come back stronger now. I've, I, in my opinion, I've unless I was always wearing blinders, I never really felt this kind of racism that that everybody talks about. I always felt like, Hey, I'm myself. I'm who I am. And you're who you are. And that's just how it is. And I never really looked at anything other than that. But here within the past two years, I've been feeling more like people look at me differently or they treat me differently or they think they, they think I should be different or, and that's, that's just happened here within the last few years. But, uh, but, uh, and it's, I feel like it's starting to just become more of, normal practice or maybe it's just something that is starting to be more and more publicized that now my blinders are coming off yeah i mean i don't know i, I don't want to say it's privilege because it's not like to not be arrested is not a privilege mm -hmm. it's like well i don't do anything wrong so therefore i'm not arrested so that's how that works but when when like in the latest story where the that young young man got shot in the back 
uh, well, why did he run? The officer was telling him to stop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, obey the orders. Obey yeah. the orders. And it's like, well, I am, I fit into a category of who to look out for, right? Just, just by the nature of my, like, what kind of blood I have. Like, I, they, Unfortunately. I'm on a list. But yeah. fortunately for me, the cops in my area also are of that same. So you know what I mean? Like, but, yeah. But, but sure. I don't have to worry about, even though. The, yeah, go on. Even though uh, a black officer shot that, that, that black kid, like, I don't have to worry about getting shot. Like, that's not the, the, the top of my list when I get pulled over. Mm-hmm. And I think that's because of, like, of where we live. And I think that because we haven't noticed it is like telling us that like because of what, because of the area, yeah. we just haven't had to worry about that. I, I think because we're in the well, most, yeah. mostly Hispanic area, we have a uh, representation that's part of the, uh, of the dem- uh, demographics here. So it's good. But the thing is, don't depend on that exactly. type of like identity uh, to protect you because one person who's black, who's a female, who's transgender, who's probably a major, whatever. Uh, I wouldn't say a small person. Sorry, I offend anyone out there. But point is, is that you could have someone in the minority group in power and they could still be bad, yes. just evil, and mm-hmm. do things against their own identity, against mm-hmm. against their own community that they're supposed to identify with. Um, so right. I wouldn't, like, for example, having Trump call him a racist and then someone point, like, oh, he has a black woman as, in his administration. Of course, she got... She, like left later uh, oh amorosa she, uh, yeah amorosa and then you still have uh the very quiet guy who also ran for against him i forgot his name he's in the house uh, uh housing urban development uh, oh ben carson ben carson that guy he's black right so everyone just like points it's like he's my one black friend right? but he's like, like a super rich black guy yeah he's super rich but the point is uh that class like you made it up right there, like that super rich, like so he kind of sees himself in the same interest as them. So that's right. really automatically a different class. Yeah, dude. Like he was gonna buy a thirty thousand dollar table. Like when 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 are we gonna oh buy a thirty thousand dollar table? No man. No. I don't even know what no. a thirty thousand dollar table would look like. Yeah. Uh, for me, that like I think the shit that's popping up culturally, it's necessary. Uh, it's kind of like the Me Too sh- uh, stuff and the Never Again movement. All these things that are like been. Pent, pent down and given kind of like a smile and a nod from the Democrats and the Republicans, but the Republicans kind of like let loose and started going more into their fringe, like the Tea Party movement to kind of like get these extreme views. And the Democrats have always been trying to like figure out what would Re- Ronald Reagan would do or what would uh, the urban, uh, urban suburban people who are living in those areas will want to vote for. And so they no longer f- uh, kind of go for the working class. And in NFL, I feel like people who go watch it, I, or my opinion, I, I, I haven't even looked it up, but I think the majority of people who watch it are like working class kind of people. Like they're not uh, super rich. Of course, the rich watch it. They go to it and all that. But I feel like it's just what the ordinary man would watch. And now it's becoming like this polarizing thing that I feel like is dangerous. Like it's super dangerous that something that's supposed to be nice and good. And I'll take my kids to go watch and raise them and keep and put these traditions and instill them uh, into these customs because I, I like them. Right. And uh, some things I don't like, but a lot like tailgating going and uh, having a fun with your friends and your family, all that stuff is great. And uh, right. doing all that stuff is great. But then when you, go there and you have to have arguments or you have to go there and you feel something different arguments not about the other team sucking it's <laughs> yeah. arguments that you no, know, right. yeah, yeah. Like, not arguments based upon the teams yeah yeah and like, it's arguments based upon political standings political observations that's yeah it's for me it just makes the whole thing just kind of start to suck and i agree like i agree like with the success or lack thereof of my team, aside from the other things that that are coming out, because now maybe because of the Me Too movement, maybe because of Never Again, I hope I hope that those movements gave these women some of the strength that they that they used to come out. But now we're finding out that the NFL is also going like unnice to or whatever bad to their female employees and the cheerleaders and how they use uh, the threat of employment or 
success in that job as leverage to make these women do things that, number one, and the most important thing that they do not want to do, and number two, well, you got to do it or you're not going to have a job anymore. And guess what? You're going to get blacklisted. And and that's super bad. Man, what was that yeah. story that you're saying that uh, uh, going on a boat or something? Okay, so I, I think because I, I, I am like Joey in this one, I never would imagine that their cheerleaders would be ever subjected to really gross things. And maybe that's my naivety of the thing. But I think, I don't remember how long ago, but I, I want to say it was the Miami Dolphins uh, forced some of their cheerleaders to participate in a topless cruise. And well, the cheerleaders that were forced to do this said it was degrading as it, as it is. Like, you know, if you're not in that profession where you're down to be totally naked, you shouldn't, like it is degraded. Like it is not what you want to be doing, right? But they were forced to. And then after that, I believe uh, a cheerleader came out and said, that teams like the Cowboys were using like the the quote unquote C and D team cheerleaders to be kind of extra sultry around the fans, extra you know out there with them to try to get the fans, like the drunk fans, to do things, to buy stuff, to keep on consuming, which is pretty doggone bad if you like as well like the, with them in the vein of the Miami thing. And this weekend I heard that a Houston Texan cheerleader was body shamed, her words, body shamed, uh, which is disgusting like to, to, for anybody to feel body shamed. And they've duct taped her body with duct tape, right? But so she could look slimmer. Like, get out of here. And then you're telling me that I'm unpatriotic because I want to support a guy who protests horrible b- police brutality? Nah, get out of here. That's 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 pretty lame. Yeah. It's fucking like a big argument for nothing. Yeah. Like, it's like, I, I feel like it's, I have a culture, right? I also have one, which, which is really hard to understand for me because I kind of like try to see ob- objectively even my own culture. But I have one myself. And if someone says some shit about my culture or whatever... Or something degrading. I'd be so fucking pissed off. Uh, I'd bicker and bicker and bicker, and I feel like I'll forget what the fuck is happening to my country, or I forget what's really going on, and I'm just in this state of argument that shit is going on, and I really don't care because I'm looking at this argument over here that's really so superficial. Like I, I know it's based off of police brutality, and that's legitimate, and that should be fought and stood up and spoken out against. And the movements and fundraising should happen to help out these uh, communities that have been attacked by the police officers. And then we're having ma- uh, mass uh, shootings as well. And the gun violence in our country is like the largest in the world. And it's really, it's another discussion for another day, but it's related to cultural uh, per- uh, traits, like these expressions of like owning a gun and going hunting and fishing, as well as shooting for a sport. Uh, all that I never grew up in, but I grew up around it. Mm-hmm. And so I have always had both ideas in my head at the same time that I'm pro gun, but there should be a, like well regulated, well regulated. That's in the, fir- the Second Amendment. So if I see that in the first sentence, I think that's more important than the ammunition part of, of the clause. Mm-hmm. I think uh, technically we should have uh, these arguments. But it's in, I feel like we're just toxic now. Like it's just reaching this moment that I don't know. I, I'm seeing fascism. I'm seeing fascism like full blown modern fascism yeah. in everyday expression. I, I I don't know if I'm going to ask you to cut this part out or not, but it's I I have come with a, come up with a very ignorant term to describe like what we've gone through, and I, I, this is obviously meant to be like not politically correct but i think that we're suffering from like too much freedom too much liberty in the sense that when i argue against you you're gonna take my side and if you don't well you're wrong no matter what like no 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 we got to remember that we can just we can disagree with each other like the eagles suck the cowboys are good (laughs) just because they won one super bowl they think they're hot shit they're not 
<laughs> but that's okay, right? Joey's my best friend. You're my best friend. Like it's it's all good. It's not like, well, Joey, the Eagles suck. You got to stop being on their team. I'm gonna go burn your house down because right. I'm an American and that's my right. Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Well, I I wouldn't describe that as freedom because one, the foundation of freedom is that you don't infringe on other people's freedom. So yeah, but I, no, but who knows that? Not everybody. Not well, that's knows. the thing, dude. But that's that's the thing, Patrick. Like yeah. the, what's going on now is I find myself having to suppress my thoughts because I'm in certain situations where if this person feels so strongly about something and the person next to them feels so strongly about something, you can't say something to contradict them because then you're wrong. And that's, that's just the way everything is now. If, if I, you say A and you say B, it, it, just there's no there's nothing wrong or there's there's nothing right about either one I, how do, how do i say that like everybody has their own opinions that they feel so strongly about and so i feel like i have to suppress my own because i don't want to give them more ammunition well that's that's an awesome way that you described it like that because that's a perfect de- description of the chill effect right that People who are technically supposed to be participating in the de- democratic process, meaning debate publicly, privately, um, all that stuff now gets chilled, right? To a point that no one's no one's like saying bad things about the dictator or saying bad things about the other side, right? Like everyone is in so polar opposites that if you speak up, you're going to get into an argument and now you have to defend yourself. And for me, I have always had uh, this principle in my head that like, I don't know why I just constantly have always focused more of the group. And I, I have come from a tradition of thinking of the individual first as individual freedom. So what EJ described is like what's happening right now, I think is hyper individualism Yeah, okay. to the point that like that type of individual liberty is going to the abs to the absolute yeah, definition yeah, exactly. that I feel we're forgetting about the collective. Yep. Um, e pluribus unum, right? Right, like we're all one, and so c- technically we're a collective. Even a corporation is a collective, even though you consider right. it legally a individual. We all know a person, right? We all know that we have a hierarchy of people in there, which is a collective. And uh, so, I feel like everyone forgets that, and we're all hyper individualistic, and we all have our own opinions, and and the truth is only subjective. No, I have always ran into this uh, when I was on the right in college because i was trying to be anti-obama and i try to find arguments from the right and i have lost all foundation of those ideas in my head with contradictions with it with the observations of current events uh, it is just uh chaos when it comes to a uh, opinions like no one is respecting each other showing deference no. what, what do you call it when we no longer follow the rules and the laws that we have like nobody follows them only like the super duper population that cannot m- muster a good defense in there for themselves nobody else follows the rules dude yeah well i think that's in the opinion pace and the culture wars because we're just going at each other but it's material economic things as well as status mm-hmm. and cultural feelings about where you are in the hierarchy that's making this shit go explosive, especially like with this administration, like he's touching all the right buttons at the right time. And um, it sucks that he also has that nuclear button, but at the same time, like this guy is pressing all our social nuclear buttons. Exactly. That, I was about to say, he's been pressing that nuke button nonstop, man. Yeah, for our own cultural debates. And, it's not helping us because we're supposed to be united yeah. when it comes to a threat interior as well as exterior. Mm-hmm. And we're not focused. We're foreign frag- or domestic, foreign or domestic. And we're completely fragmented uh, from the whole spectrum. Yeah. Like from the right, they're fragmented, the left, they're fragmented. And all of us are just in chaos, just arguing with each other, not making any goddamn sense or resolution or like res- reconciliation or redemption none of those nice words no none of them dude <laughs> like uh we're just yeah. bickering 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 and this that nfl i, I want to bring you guys on because i have always ignored it and i remember Furman and i um a friend of mine as well as joey and, and ej like i had an gr- agreement with him that like nfl sucks or whatever. but then in college we started like getting into a little bit more because the, the our college had that culture 
course, port, like Texas has the culture of football. And growing up in right. Texas, I always have to be, I always grew up trying to like avoid the popular and football is the most popular thing in fucking Texas. Mm-hmm. So I try <laughs> to avoid it as much as possible and, and never learn the culture of it. And I started appreciating it later on in life, uh, particularly the camaraderie that it creates, but I don't like the sport still. But uh, in the same sense, all that stuff that I learned from it um, and uh, the agreement that I had with Furman, I know that was wrong. Like, it's so much more than what I portrayed to be like being anti that culture. But it's like me on the other side now. Like, I'm starting to get, like, if I wasn't showing the appreciation uh, still, like, say, if I was still the same close minded person. That I grew up trying to be like super punk about it. And I was not appreciative of it. And it happens now. Everyone will be looking at me as unpatriotic. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Patrick's been that guy for a long time. He's been saying shit about football all the time. He never puts his hand on his heart. He never pledges the legions under the fucking, oh, no, I'm sorry, under a God. Like he never stands for the anthem. He's a left wing person who's, who should be kicked out and doesn't love this country and doesn't believe in God. But no, dude, that's your right though. I like that. That for me, like, I'm so kind of happy that I appreciated it. So I don't get this chill effect happen to me because I'm right now kind of resolved where I am in my sp- position. And w- my advice for people who feel like if you bring up your own opinion and someone's going to like shout you down, you better stand on something solid. Like stand on something solid and stay there. Don't move around. Don't go on something that you don't know. Stay on something that you know. And, if you, and don't disrespect the other person. Like try to show kindness as much as you can and show love, show them that you are neighbors and, uh, and no matter what, like you will have a, a proper resolution with the debate you might have or a discourse that you have without going into some hellhole of, of a debate, like something that you will fucking hate. Right. And just, and basically stop uh, publicly debating, which our Republic requires that fuel, right? Like all of our opinions, what we're doing right now, all that stuff does matter. So. It does. It does. Yeah. Oh. I think we go for it. I no, I just think that that's a, a good point, Patrick. And I wish, man, I, I wish more people thought that way. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult because it's toxic, right? Like you, it's junk food for discourse, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone can get, get into it. It's so fucking easy. Like when we're forgetting our own uh, education, we're forgetting by our own, self-education that we had with this country like i i said before just earlier that this country was born on blood and, and violence organized violence and uh we have to remember the pain that this country went through so we don't relive it so we don't have to create laws to prevent more freedom and uh f- and forget about the foundation like uh, the country is awesome when it came to like enlightenment ideas and progressing but uh, bef- instead of going into that, there's a lot of bad things. Also, enlightenment ideas like right, moral, uh, uh, what was it called? Social Darwinism and other racism that happened in the Enlightenment period. And our founding fathers' royal constitution all around po- property rights to protect their property, and so they use guns to protect their property. And what's the definition of their property at the time? Humans. Yeah. So we all forget about that history too with the guns, which is part of our culture. Are, and we all kind of have to re-educate ourselves with this history, and it's not. And a statue getting pulled down is not going to make us forget it. Mm-mm. It's not like there's a statue that got pulled down on George Washington a long time ago. We know who the president is, the first president. Right. Like right. It, it doesn't matter about that. Like as long as there's written history, we will learn it and put it in a museum, con- put context behind it. We will learn about it, and that's it. Like we don't have to forget it by destroying it. Um, I feel like. This is very connected to the foundation of this country. And football is this like pinnacle thing that's American. Yeah, but what 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 is it? What's football? Like you used to say football was made out of mini war, it's like mini warfare, but at the end, just like at the beginning, like you say what's up, you know, like the captains going to the middle of the field is a representation of like these are the sides, but they're cordial. Because at the end of the day, after battle, they're friends. Like like a majority of them, and so like we have to remember that we can have a superheated debate, we can have a superheated discussion, we can raise our voices in uh, in passion, 
but we got to remember that we're not enemies mm-hmm. and, and that's right. super hard for people to yeah to remember yeah we're not enemies like we're we're in the same planet yeah look around like i last time i checked we both live in the same country guy like yeah and for me yeah. for me i'd see it more like i'm on the same planet going the same around the same earth, uh, yeah, sun right like exactly I'm, yeah I, i'm not gonna go throw stones at you right I, like, come on okay well that was a really good discussion i really appreciate you guys coming on on the show to discuss this uh i know you guys don't really discuss politics too much but this shit I needed to hear you guys on this. I wanted to see what you guys thought about it. Yeah, man, no problem. Like, well, I'm glad we got to talk about that stuff, and I'm glad that we did have a little bit of of a, of a talk about it. And I hope that I mean, I hope that these problems uh, resolve themselves because we've achieved what every protest nowadays wants, and that's change, change for the better. Joey? Yeah, thanks, Patrick, for having for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. I, I enjoy every second of it. And like EJ said, and like you said, uh, uh, it's good to, to get these kind of insights. And, and and I need to change my own my own self. And like you said, I need to uh, stand on something solid. And and I just for the sake of the future of this country, I hope that more people start to realize what y'all said is that we're we live in the same country. Mm-hmm. And we we need to be unified, and we need to show the world that we are unified. Yeah, and, and I hope that that happens at some point. Yeah, for sure. Well, well, with that, I conclude this episode. Thank you, EJ. Thank you, Joey, for coming. That was EJ, Joey, and I talking about the NFL freedom and race. You know, American topics. Well, that does it for this month's show. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at the real underscore cheers if you haven't already please subscribe to this show uh, to hear it every month you have, you can find it wherever you download podcasts my apologies for not publishing last month i do have a full-time job and will send out prior notice if i do miss a month if you are subscribed please do leave us a rating or a review it helps others find us and provide us feedback uh, at rp everett at gmail.com If you are not a patron, please sign up and make a pledge. Until next time, I'm Patrick Everett.